Welcome back to our lesson on inter-VLAN routing. As we've previously discussed, VLANs are an essential feature in modern networks. They help us logically segment large networks into smaller, more manageable broadcast domains. However, without inter-VLAN routing, these VLANs would be isolated from one another, hindering communication between devices in different VLANs. In this lesson, we'll explore various methods of inter-VLAN routing, how to configure them, and understand the routing logic involved. By the end, you'll be well prepared to tackle inter-VLAN routing questions in your CCNA 200, 301 exam. So, let's get started with a quick review of VLANs. VLANs, or Virtual Local Area Networks, are a mechanism used to divide a single physical LAN into multiple broadcast domains. By doing this, VLANs enhance security, reduce network congestion, and improve overall network efficiency. Devices within the same VLAN can communicate with each other directly, while devices in different VLANs cannot communicate without the help of a router or layer 3 switch. Consider a scenario with multiple VLANs in your network, such as VLAN 2, IT, VLAN 3, HR, and VLAN 4, Sales. In this setup, each VLAN represents a different department or group of users. Without inter-VLAN routing, devices in VLAN 2 cannot communicate with devices in VLAN 3 or VLAN 4, and vice versa. This lack of communication between VLANs would be impractical and inefficient for most real-world network deployments. Inter-VLAN routing provides a solution to this limitation, enabling communication between different VLANs. There are three primary methods to implement inter-VLAN routing. The router-on-a-stick approach involves using a single physical router interface to connect to a trunk port on a switch. The router interface is then configured with multiple logical sub-interfaces, each associated with a specific VLAN. These sub-interfaces operate as if they were separate physical interfaces, routing traffic between the VLANs. This method is suitable for small-scale deployments and environments with limited VLANs. Here's the explanation of each step. 1. Interface Gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 0. This command enters the configuration mode for the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface, which will be used for trunking VLANs. 2. No shutdown. This command enables the Gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface, ensuring that it is active and ready to process traffic. 3. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 10. This command creates a sub-interface for VLAN 10 on the Gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. 4. Encapsulation.1Q10. This command specifies the VLAN encapsulation for sub-interface Gigabyte Ethernet 0 slash 0. 10. As VLAN 10 using the IEE 802 1Q standard. 5. IP address 192.168.10.1255.255.2550. This command assigns the IP address 192.168.10.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 to the subinterface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 10. This enables the router to act as the gateway for VLAN 10 devices. 6. Similar steps are repeated for VLANs 20 and 30 with their respective sub-interfaces being configured on the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. Sub-interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 20 is assigned VLAN 20 with IP address 192.168.20.1 and sub-interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 30 is assigned VLAN 30 with IP address 192.168.30.1. By configuring these sub-interfaces, the router is now capable of routing traffic between VLANs 10, 20 and 30, allowing devices in each VLAN to communicate with each other through the router as their gateway. This approach efficiently utilizes a single physical interface to handle multiple VLANs, simplifying network design and reducing the need for additional router interfaces. The router-on-a-stick approach involves using a single physical router interface to connect to a trunk port on a switch. The router interface is then configured with multiple logical sub-interfaces, each associated with a specific VLAN. These sub-interfaces operate as if they were separate physical interfaces, routing traffic between the VLANs. This method is suitable for small-scale deployments and environments with limited VLANs. Here's the explanation of each step. 1. Interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. This command enters the configuration mode for the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface, which will be used for trunking VLANs. 2. No shutdown. This command enables the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface, ensuring that it is active and ready to process traffic. 3. 
interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. 10. This command creates a sub-interface for VLAN 10 on the gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. 4. Encapsulation.1q10. This command specifies the VLAN encapsulation for sub-interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. 10 as VLAN 10 using the IEE 802, 1Q standard, 5. IP address 192.168.10.1255.255.255.0. This command assigns the IP address 192.168.10.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 to the sub-interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 10. This enables the router to act as the gateway for VLAN 10 devices. 6. Similar steps are repeated for VLANs 20 and 30, with their respective sub-interfaces being configured on the Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. Sub-interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 20 is assigned VLAN 20 with IP address 192.168.20.1 and sub-interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. 30 is assigned VLAN 30 with IP address 192.168.30.1. By configuring these sub-interfaces, the router is now capable of routing traffic between VLANs 10, 20 and 30, allowing devices in each VLAN to communicate with each other through the router as their gateway. This approach efficiently utilizes a single physical interface to handle multiple VLANs, simplifying network design and reducing the need for additional router interfaces. Some high-end Layer 3 switches offer physical interfaces that can be configured for routing, similar to a traditional router. These are called routed ports. By using routed ports, you can achieve inter-VLAN routing without needing SVIs. In this configuration, the switch is Gigabyte Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1, Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2, and Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 3 interfaces are being configured as Layer 3 interfaces. The No Switch Port command removes the interfaces from Layer 2 switching mode, effectively converting them into routed interfaces. Afterward, IP addresses are assigned to each interface, allowing the switch to operate as a Layer 3 device capable of routing traffic. Here's the explanation of each step. 1. Switch config. Hash interface. Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1. This command enters the configuration mode for Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 interface. 2. Switch config if. Hash no switch port. This command removes the interface from Layer 2 switching mode, making it a routed interface. 3. Switch config if hash IP address 192.168.10.1255.255.255.0. This command assigns the IP address 192.168.10.1 to the Gigabyte Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 interface with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. The switch's interface is now capable of routing traffic between networks. 4. Similar steps are repeated for Gigabyte Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 2 and Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 3, configuring them as routed interfaces with IP addresses 192.168.20.1 and 192.168.30.1 respectively, along with their respective subnet masks. By converting these interfaces to Layer 3 routed interfaces, the switch can now perform routing functions between the different IP networks connected to each interface. This setup allows the switch to function as a basic router, forwarding packets between the connected networks based on their IP addresses. This configuration is useful for scenarios where the switch needs to provide basic inter-VLAN routing or connectivity between different IP subnets within the local network. When communication between devices in different VLANs is required, the process involves several steps to ensure successful data transmission. For instance, let's consider a scenario where a device in VLAN 10 needs to communicate with another device in VLAN 20. Here are the steps involved. 1. The source device, for example PC1 in VLAN 10, generates a packet destined for the IP address of the target device, for example PC2 in VLAN 20. 2. The switch receives the packet and examines the destination MAC address to determine the appropriate outgoing interface. 3. If the destination MAC address is not found in the switch's MAC address table, the switch broadcasts the packet to all ports in the destination, VLAN, broadcast domain. 4. The router or Layer 3 switch acting as the default gateway for both VLANs receives the broadcasted packet on its trunk port. 5. The router examines the destination IP address in the packet 
and checks its routing table to determine the best path for the packet. 6. Based on the destination VLAN's IP address, the router forwards the packet to the corresponding VLAN interface, logical subinterface SVI or routed port. 7. The destination device, for example PC2 in VLAN 20, receives the packet and responds in a similar manner, completing the communication process between the two devices in different VLANs. This process allows for efficient inter-VLAN communication while maintaining network security and segmentation. We hope this video helped you on your journey towards becoming a cybersecurity expert. Remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest content. And if you found our videos helpful, please give us a thumbs up and share them with your friends and colleagues. Don't forget to check out the links and description for our Anki flashcards and to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Your support can make a real difference in the lives of those in need. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.